The People's Assembly raises a question about the nature of class struggle. There's a sort of assumption that working class struggle is always centred on industrial activity, on what's going on in the workplaces, on strike action. And the People's Assembly seems to be something rather different from that. But if you look at the history of the working class uh, in Britain, what we can actually see is a wide range of different kinds of working class struggle through our history. I want to look at three examples. I want to look at the example of the Chartists, the example of the National Unemployed Workers Movement, and the example of the poll tax revolt, each illustrating different forms of working class struggle from the dominance of strike action. In the case of the Chartists, the first great working class movement in British history, there was a demand that working class people should be given the vote, and this turned into a mass campaign characterised by huge demonstrations, occasionally reaching almost insurrectionary proportions. There was strike action, there was a lot of strike action, and very often it was chartist agitation that gave working people, without strong union organisation, the confidence to take strike action for the first time. But strike action wasn't the driver. It was the mass demonstrations demanding the vote that were fundamental to Chartism. Then there's the example of the National Unemployed Workers Movement during the 1930s. This was different again. This, of course, was a period of mass unemployment in the Great Depression, and very large numbers of working people had no chance to take strike action because they didn't have jobs. But a mass movement was built among the unemployed, and again and again in the course of the 1930s, hundreds of thousands of people would sometimes be demonstrating on the streets, and there were often pitch battles being fought uh, between the unemployed and the police, very often with the unemployed being supported by ordinary workers who had jobs coming out on the demonstrations in solidarity with their unemployed comrades. And then if we look at the example of the poll tax revolt at the end of the 1980s, here was something different again, uh, a struggle which was built from below, starting initially on council estates, initially in Scotland in fact, uh, and with local activists building resistance to an unfair tax which was shifting the burden of local taxation uh, from the better off to the mass of working people and the poor. And the main tactic here was to refuse to pay. So it was effectively a tax strike, but a tax strike was, that was backed by militant demonstrations outside town halls and courthouses where they were trying to enforce payment of the tax by using the legal system. Each of these struggles was very different in character. Uh, a mass uh, protest campaign demanding the right to vote uh, militant action by the unemployed on the streets demanding uh, better unemployment benefits, a mass campaign on working class estates against an unjust tax. Each had a different aim, each was different in character, and yet each was unquestionably a form of class struggle. The People's Assembly will be different again different in aim and different in character, and we can't yet predict exactly what form it will take. What we can say is that the People's Assembly is a perfect fit with where we find ourselves at the moment as we contemplate the next step in the development of the class struggle in Britain. What's crucial about the People's Assembly is that it accepts that union organisation and workplace organisation has been much weakened in the last generation of neoliberal attacks by the state and the employers. Union membership is only half what it was in the 1970s and inside the workplaces it's very rare for there to be effective workplace-based union organisation, what we used to call rank and file organisation. Most working people don't have a lot of confidence when it comes to taking on their own boss. The beauty of the People's Assembly is that it extends way beyond the ranks of unionised workers 
though it has unionized workers at its core, with eight major trade unions centrally involved, but the aim is to involve the working class as a whole, the ununionized workers, the casual and part-time workers, the students and the disabled and the pensioners and the single parents and so on, those who don't have jobs and are not part uh, of any workplace at all. The idea is to get everybody together, the working class as a whole, and create a single unified mass movement that can begin to restore confidence and inject combativity back into the resistance to austerity and privatisation. We have no crystal ball. We can't predict the future. We don't know what form the People's Assembly will take. What we have to hope is that it will be the beginning of a rising mass movement, not just to challenge austerity and privatisation, but by generating a wave of demonstrations and strikes and occupations, a wave of resistance which will make Britain ungovernable for those who would drive through this programme and destroy the welfare state and become, through that process of mass struggle, a platform for bringing down the government and overthrowing the rule of finance capital and beginning to take control of the economy in the interests of ordinary working people.